Hey scholars, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to show you how to find the shear in the moment on a cantilevered beam with a uniform distributed load upwards. A little while ago I posted a similar video with a uniform load downwards. So let's, let's do one with the uniform load upwards and see how that affects the outcome. Now before we get too far along, what is this really? I mean, I can draw this on the board and it's all nice and everything, but if I was looking at something, what's, what's an example of this, and, you know, a physical example? Well, Purdue University, where I am right now, has a flight program. We, we train commercial pilots. And so there's all these little white airplanes flying around all the time. Aerodynamic loads on a wing are, uni are distributed loads. Now, they're not exactly uniform, but they're close enough. For, for, for this, we can think about this like an airplane wing. There's low pressure on top of the wing and high pressure below the wing, so it pushes the plane upwards. Well, that's pretty much how this works. Now, are wings beams? Well, it depends on the plane, but if the wing is long and thin, yeah, it acts pretty much like a beam. In fact, for a long time, wings really were designed as approximately beams. Is it a cantilever? Well, the wing is certainly free at one end. There's nothing out there at the tip. And where it connects to the fuselage, there's these really heavy uh, mounting fittings. So yeah, it's pretty much uh, clamped there. So even though this doesn't look like one of these little white airplanes flying around, it acts like one, and that's what we need. So let's uh, work through this problem and draw the load shear moment diagram for the problem. Now, there's a recipe for solving statics problems. Um, I've done a video on it. Now, here's the URL for it if you want to type it in and check it out. The recipe consists of four mandatory pieces. One, working diagram. Well, that's that. Two, free body diagram, which we're going to draw here in a second. Three is the uh, equations of static equilibrium, which we're going to do. And four, we're going to solve for something. Now, after we solve for something, and the something is going to be reaction forces and moments, we're going to draw the load shear moment diagram. So that's the plan. That's the path we're going to walk here. So let's start. Let's draw the free body diagram. Okay, and I've got my uniform load upward. I've just been drawing in green. Got some different color markers. I might as well use them. Now, one of my students the other day asked what I thought was a fairly insightful question. Does the number of arrows here correlate with the load, the, the magnitude of the load? Well, not usually. In fact, I don't even have the same number of arrows here. There's, there's a, 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 a bunch of arrows across here, and all that indicates is that you've got a distributed load. Um, the number of arrows is probably just the choice of whoever's drawing it. So don't read too much into the number of arrows, but it was a good question. So, I need to have a reaction force on the end. Well, let's see, all those forces are up. I'm going to guess that this, my reaction force over here, is downwards. By the way, it's not a free body diagram until you have a positive sign convention. So there's mine, and this is arbitrary. I can pick anything I want. I usually pick this unless I got some pretty good reason. So this is going to, the, the lift here is going to try to make a uh, counterclockwise moment about the, about the uh, clamp there. So I'm, the reaction force is probably going to go that way. Now remember, the, the directions of this arrow and that arrow, those are, those are a guess and nothing more than a guess. And because they're a guess, they may be wrong. And if those directions are wrong, all that's going to happen is I'm going to get negative numbers. Well, negative numbers are just as valid as positive numbers. And those tell you that, well, I guessed wrong, but they, they correct that for you. So that's good. So let's see, if I'm going to do this, let's see, let's toss, I'm going to, I've got the working diagram, I've got the free body diagram, and remember free means, fr free is the operative word there, free means I've cut it away from its support, so mathematically I've cut the wing away from the fuselage, now you don't do that in real life, that would be bad, but mathematically we do, and the way the wing knows the fuselage is there is the fuselage communicates it, through the force and the, reac the reaction force and the reaction moment at the root of the wing. This end is called the root and that's called the tip. If you're into the aviation lingo here. Um, so let's go ahead and, and uh, write our equations of static equilibrium here. Okay, that's minus FR because my positive is up, that's down, so that's negative, plus 
Now, I need to know what F total is here. Total is, F total is the sum of the uniform load as you go down the wing. Sum of the load as you go down the wing. God, that sounds like an integral, doesn't it? It is. So, this, I'm trying to find the area of that shape right now. Well, the area of a rectangle is pretty easy. It's base times height. So, it's 5 times 2,000. That's going to be 10,000 newtons. Now, it's 5 meters times 2,000 newtons per meter, so the units work out to newtons. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw that in up here. I'm going to be very careful. It's not an addition to the uniform load. It's in place of the uniform load. So I've got them both on here, but don't think there's actually two sets of loads here. They're not. Under some circumstances, these two are equivalent. Under some circumstances. And we'll get to, here, that, get to that here in a second. So F total, well, S to equal zero, that's not too hard. Reaction force is going to be 10,000 newtons. Okay, so I guessed right. Wasn't too hard to guess right. Uh, let's see, I need to call this point something here. I'll call that point A at the, at the root. And uh, probably should have called it R. Um, so sum the moments about point A. And let's see, MR is going to be negative according to my positive sign convention. That's a little better. There we go. Plus, now this is going to be, the, the, the total force is going to give me a uh, positive moment according to this. And here's where we need to pause for a second. When I put this here, I'm doing something very specific. I'm, it's called concentrating the load. I'm taking this distributed load and I'm concentrating it at one point. Now, there's two big ideas here. Number one, the, the concentrated load has to be equivalent to F total, and it has to be at the centroid of this shape. Well, the centroid of a rectangle is not too hard to figure out. This is two and a half meters. So that's not too hard to figure out. Now, I, these are equivalent under one condition. They're equivalent when I'm trying to find the reaction moment. Here's why. The reaction moment doesn't know the difference between this uniform load applied across the beam the wing and the concentrated force applied at the centroid of this shape here. This thinks those two are the same thing. And go work it out mathematically. You really do get the same answer both ways. Now, even though the reaction moment doesn't know the difference between those two, it, see, it, it sees them as the same. The beam definitely knows the difference between the two. The load shear moment diagram for a uniform force is definitely not the same as a load shear moment diagram for a concentrated force in the middle of the beam. You get to concentrate the loads only for finding the reaction moment, not for the load shear moment diagram. You will get the wrong answer if you do it that way. So with that in mind, let's see, I've got 2.5 meters times 5,000, I'm sorry, 10,000 newtons. Okay, well, sure looks like 25,000 newton meters to me. Okay, that's the moment at the root. Now, let's just pause for a second and, and think about the physics of this here. If you've ever been on an airliner, you know, when you take off and you look out the window, the wings are just sitting there. And when the pilot pulls the wheel back and lifts the nose up and makes an angle between the wing and the oncoming air, the wing makes more lift. When it does, notice that the wings go up like this. They're not rigid, they're flexible. And so they go up a little bit. They deform under load. Well, what they're reacting to is that. That's what's making, you know, the, 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 the uniform load here in that moment is uh, what's making those wings bend up. So if you've ever been on an airliner flight and you've watched the, out the window as you take off, you've seen the effect of this. Right? So this is not just some abstraction. So we've got that. Let's write these uh, forces here in moments so I can clear my board off. And that's kind of, I know it's kind of cramped there, but I don't have a real big board. State school. 
So let's clear this off. And now that we have these things, let's draw the load shear moment diagram. All right, so it looks kind of like a ladder so far. Kind of a weird ladder, but a ladder. So let's start adding in all the forces and moments uh, onto our diagram here. Okay, there they all are. I've got the reaction force down. I've got the reaction moment which is now uh, clockwise, and I've got the uniform load all taken care of there. So with shear, what we're going to do is shear is the accumulation of load as you go across the beam. Accumulation as you go across the beam. Man, that sounds like an integral, doesn't it? Hmm. Well, let's see. So let's go down 10,000. Now, I don't need units here because I've got the units taken care of here and here. I'm not about to chuck my units. Always track your units through the problem. Okay, there's that. Now, as I accumulate load, every meter across I go, I go across on the beam, I accumulate another 2,000 newtons. Well, 2,000 newtons per meter over 5 meters. Okay, this is 0 to 5 here. In fact, let's put that there that gets me back to zero. And I need to be at zero because there's, there's nothing happening at the end there. There's a free end. There's no force applied there. So what this is going to look like is that. I'm going to call that A, that area there, because we'll need that here in a second. Or we could use it here in a second. So there's what, this, what shear looks like. Now notice this is a horizontal line. Well, when you integrate a horizontal line, you get a straight line that's not horizontal. When you integrate this, you're going to get a parabola. So in, in mathematical lingo, that's a zero-order curve, first-order curve, second-order curve. We're going to have those. So what I need right now is a shape that has a negative slope that goes to zero slope and winds up at zero at the end, because remember, there's no, there's no force out there. So we're at the very tip. There's no moment. Now, since we're integrating as you go down, as you go down a, a load shear moment diagram, you're integrating. So integrated to get from there to there, I'm going to integrate to get from there to there. All right, that means height here is slope here. I have a big negative number uh, height, I need a big negative number slope. Zero height, zero slope. Well, there's a curve that does that, looks like this. And because we already know the numbers, we figured this out. Now, here's the problem. That was negative. That's a negative moment according to that. I just drew it positive. Are there two sign conventions at work here? Yes, there are. There are two sign conventions here. This one is arbitrary. I got to pick that and I let it be whatever it wants. The other one is called the designer sign convention or the beam sign convention. I just did a video on that a little while ago, and here's the URL for that one. Now, the beam sign convention is chosen basically to make this work. Designers picked a, this convention a while ago, and we've stuck to it. Now, I'm not as ha any happier than you are about two different sign conventions in the same problem, but I can't fix it now. I'm just a professor. So we're, we're stuck with them, and this is. This, this is the way the engineering world works, so you really do need to learn this. So let's just review beam sign convention for a minute. We're going to need a beam. How about this? This is just a ruler. By the way, center finding ruler. You're going to love these. So this is my beam. Right? Any moment that makes this beam, there you can see it, have a curvature that looks like this, positive. Makes a smiley face a moment that makes the beam bend down this way, negative, looks like a frowny face, All right? Positive, negative. There you go. That's the way to remember that. And it's positive and negative as you go from left to right. On, on more complicated 
load shear moment diagrams, you need to apply that, that uh, rule in a little bit more nuanced way. But for right now, that's what we need to know. So that's why this is positive. Okay? Now, one other thing you can do here is that the area there equals the change in height there. That, again, we're integrating. So one last thing. If I knew the equation for that, whoops, I'll call that S for shear. Now let's see, it's minus 10,000 plus, erase that, sorry, 2,000, plus 2,000x. That's the equation of that line. Well, if I want to know the equation of this line, then I've got to integrate that one, don't I? Let's do that real quick. Now, I need to erase this stuff here because i got this little board. Okay, so the last, last thing to do here, and this is going to call this m of x, all right, for a moment. Okay, m of x is m0. That's the moment at the initial, the initial point, which for us is the reaction moment. Plus, I'm going to get my head out of your way here in a second. Okay, so there you go. There's what it looks like. And uh, so this is going to be 25,000 plus, I'm going to integrate this. So minus 10,000x. Now, my integration limits, I'm going from 0 to x. Well, don't, don't you have to go to some number? Well, it depends on what you want. If you want the total area, yeah, you go to some number. But if you want a function, which is what I want, I'm just going to leave that x. We do this all the time in algebra, don't we? Well, I don't know what this number is. I'll just call it x and I'll figure it out later. Well, that's what's going on here. I don't know what that number is. I'm just going to call it x and figure it out later. Figuring it out later means drawing the plot. So this is totally okay. I'm not violating any, any rules here. Okay. And that's the equation for that curve right there. So there you have it. There's a load shear moment diagram for a cantilevered beam with an upward uniform load. Hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.